Hello, Sunday School students, and welcome to Sunday School Online. I'm your teacher for this session, Deaconess Robin Miller. Thank you so much for having joined us for Sunday School Online. I come to you by way of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the community of Northside, where our pastor is Bishop James Chapman, our First Lady, Lady Robin Chapman, and where we proudly proclaim as a church family, there is a God in Bethlehem, and Jesus is his name. As you can tell, I am doing much better. Thank you so much for your prayers, for your teacher. Very much appreciated. And as you can tell, they were heard and felt. While people are coming into class, I'm going to go ahead with our announcements. We have additional Sunday School classes on our GVTAC Cincinnati YouTube channel. So don't forget to go by there for additional Sunday School classes. And adults, you have not been left out. Please go to our GVTAC.org website. And voila, here it is. So. While you are there, as you can see, this is the information that you can access for your, uh, for your Sunday School class. And don't forget that we have in-person Sunday School Christian Education classes on every first and third Sunday of the month. So while you're on our website, get the address to our campus so that you can come by and be in person for your Sunday school class. We also have uh, virtual classes every Sunday as the Lord allows. Here's the information. And while you're on our website, please get two additional numbers. One, that of our prayer line, please call so that we can pray with you. You don't have to be a member. We will pray with you regarding your prayer request. You are not in this alone. If you have questions about salvation, we'll also discuss that with you, including the opportunity to be baptized in Jesus' name. And it can occur virtually. You don't have to be in the city. You don't have to be in the state. So don't allow those to be barrier to the barriers to the free gift that God has waiting for you to access. The other number that I encourage you to get is that of our office telephone number. Call our office. Make an appointment to speak with our pastor. Introduce yourself. Allow him to introduce himself. Let him know that you've been stopping by the temple. Please remember to like, to subscribe, hit the reminder bell so that you get additional content as it becomes available. And this is your cordial invitation. You are invited to join us for in-person services. We have our Sunday morning live worship experience service at 11 o'clock a.m. every Sunday morning as the Lord allows, as well as our Bible classes on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock. Now these are hybrid services. They're in person and they are virtual. You are strongly encouraged to be in person. There is nothing like receiving the word in person for yourself. But if you're unable to do that, like I could not for the past two weeks due to illness, don't deprive yourself of the word. Join us virtually. And it is time for our review. So last week, we talked about God being the good shepherd. Jesus didn't leave us alone with just salvation because he cares for us and wanted us in relationship with him. To care means to the provision of what is necessary for the help the welfare, the maintenance and protection of someone or something. It also means to feel concern or interest, attach importance to something. Jesus cares for us. He lays down his life for the sheep. He withholds nothing for their care and provision to the extent of sacrificing himself. 
Just as shepherds guarded their sheep and cared for them day and night, so does God care for us. Even when life gets difficult, God protects us, guides us, and never leaves us. We can trust that God is the, and I added our, perfect shepherd. And again, to give proper credit, that was from gotquestions.org. I like that statement so much that I used it as a part of one of our conclusion points last week. So for our homework, it was two part as always. You were to read ahead for this week's lesson and answer this question for yourself. How is Jesus your good shepherd? So for me, it wasn't hard to answer because I had one situation come up and that was I've been sick for two weeks. So during this time, as my good shepherd, Jesus provided for me by way of sending people to help care for me. Like my dad who made sure that I had meals, who went to the store for me. People were praying for me. They called and prayed with me over the phone. They prayed during prayer service and lifted my name up to Jesus like yourself. People checked on me by phone calls, by text, by voicemail. And they also let me know that my presence was missed. And that was both from my family and my church family. And here is a plug. If you don't have a church family, get become involved in, allow God to lead you to a church family. I highly recommend the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church. It makes a difference to be connected interconnected and have people around you that are praying for you and lifting you up we're just like any other family so i encourage you if you're not a part of a church family become a part of one along with that god bless my job they worked with me during my recovery and in the midst of my recovery because i'm still recovering so jesus took very good care of me as my good shepherd so maybe my answer was a little different than yours and maybe you thought oh i did not think about talking about jesus being my good shepherd in that way but jesus is very practical he meets us at the point of our need where we have or where he can provide provision for us so he is our good shepherd on so many different in so many different ways Maybe yours wasn't sickness. Maybe he provided lunch for you. Maybe you whispered a prayer in your heart and you didn't share it with him, but you thought, wow, I need this or I would like to have that. And there it is. It's provided for you. Who do you think heard that prayer? Who do you think answered that prayer? God uses the hands, feet, words, encouragement, substance of his people of people so that we are providing and we're a family to one another even if we don't quite know the person so Jesus is our good shepherd so this week we're talking about <coughs> excuse me as I said I'm still recovering so have a little grace with your teacher if you hear me coughing or what have you um, Jesus gives us life forever the lesson text is John chapter 11, verses 17 through 27, and our focus verse or our golden text will be found in John chapter 11, verse 25. So our aim, the purpose, what we hope to gain in looking at this lesson is that we see that the power to live comes from Jesus and cannot be overcome by death. So in our previous lessons, we discussed that everyone, everyone, everybody, I emphasize that point, will have eternal life. That is the way God created us. 
it begins after we have finished living in our bodies. So you hear the terms mortality, that's in our bodies, immortality, that's outside of the body. After we finished, our spirit has finished living in this body. So the point is where and how we live our eternal life. That's where the separation comes. That's where the difference is made. It is dependent on our earthly decisions or the choices we make while living in our bodies. If we accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, it's a choice, and remain faithful in our commitment to him while we live here on earth, then we will live with Jesus forever or for eternity. They're the same thing. If we do not accept his free gift of salvation, which includes forgiveness of our sins, then we will have separated from him or we will live separated from him forever in judgment, which will be spent in a place called hell first, then the lake of fire. Jesus gives us the opportunity to spend our lives forever with him. And also later in our lesson, we will see another way he gives us life forever with him. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm sorry. Last week, Jesus let us know that he is the good shepherd. This week, he reveals to us that he is the resurrection, that in him we have life. So as we continue to look at what's going on in our lesson, we begin it with Jesus arriving after hearing the news of his friend Lazarus' death. So this wasn't just someone, some news that was brought to Jesus like, hey, this person needs a healing or hey, they're asking for you to come and touch them and speak words of life over them. No, there was a relationship here. This was the friend of Jesus. Jesus, he recognized this name. He spent time with this family. And this was a part of our previous lesson about Martha and Mary. But um, Lazarus was their brother and he spent time with this family. So interestingly enough, Jesus did not leave immediately after hearing the news. Now, this is interesting because typically when people hear of a serious illness, of death, we move right away to do something. We send a text. We prepare a card and, and mail it off of condolences. We, make, we ask questions or inquire about the upcoming funeral. We do something. Instead, Jesus waited for God's perfect timing, not his own, fueled by his emotions. We still continue to see Jesus' connection with his Father and his obedience to do all things that please him. When Jesus arrives, his friend has been dead for four days. Count them. One, two, three, four long enough that he has been buried, long enough that there is a certainty of death, not that he passed out, not that he went into a coma and he was revived again. No, they went through the process. Long enough for the grieving process of mourners to come and be around the family. So he's been dead for a while. Martha learns that Jesus has arrived and she leaves to meet him. She expresses that if he had been there, her brother, Lazarus, would not have died. Martha expresses her faith to the Lord that if he had been present, she knows he could have prevented Lazarus' death. Like those that came to comfort their family, Jesus comforts Martha with the reassurance he is the resurrection. The interaction between Martha and Jesus is awesome and a lesson for us, to, for us today. As you continue to read the scriptures in our lesson text, in verse 22, 
we sh we see that she expressed her faith to the Lord, a faith that went beyond the current status of her circumstances. Remember the context, Lazarus has been dead for four days and is buried. But in that verse, she says, even now. So at the time of her statement, her brother's been dead, long dead. And she professes to Jesus that she knows God will fulfill his request, even in a long dead situation. I emphasize long dead because we have experienced things like Martha that in our eyes or through human reasoning looked long dead. Things that we may have given up on and stopped hoping for, stopped believing God for. But like Martha professed to Jesus, God is able to change those things, although the now doesn't look like it can change. And this leads us to our golden text found in the book of John, chapter 11, verse 25. In the King James Version, it reads, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. In the Amplified Classic Version, I include verse 26 as well. Jesus said to her, I am myself the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on me, although he may die, yet he shall live. And whoever continues to live and believes in, has faith in, cleaves to, and relies on me shall never actually die at all. So in looking at our golden text and applying it to our lesson, I'm going to include verse 26 because it gives us a fuller picture. As you can see, it didn't just stop at one place. So looking at this and pulling out the part to examine, although he may die, yet he shall live. So let's look at that. So resurrection, it means, or excuse me, Jesus is the resurrection and to resurrect means to stand up. The Bible tells us that we are dead in our sins. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 in the new living translation it reads you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away then god made you alive with christ for he forgave all of our sins with that i want us to get a clearer understanding as well it doesn't just stop at our sins. We also understand, as we talked about previously, in a different context, but same principle, that we can be dead in situations. We can be dead in circumstances, dead in our thinking by way of depression, our relationships by way of connectivity with Christ and his creation, meaning his people, dead in our finances, dead in our dreams. Has God ever taught you how to dream again? You know, we lose this sometimes from living in the ever day, every day, going from home from one homework assignment to doing the next, from one grade to the next, from one task or project to the next, from one work day to the next. We can get lost in the details. But in all of these things, God can bring us back to life and cause us to stand back up again. It also means that those who die in Christ as a saved individual will live again with Christ in heaven. So the next part of that that I want to pull out for us to examine, and whoever continues to live, 
and believes in, has faith in, cleaves to and relies on me, shall never actually die at all. For those of us living, the Bible describes death as having a sting and a victory over us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 55 through 57 in the International Children's Bible. It reads, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your power to hurt? Death's power, it continues to read in the scripture, to hurt is sin. The power of sin is the law. But we thank God he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible also explains that Jesus tasted, meaning he experienced the sting of death for us before redemption by grace came by his sacrifice. In Hebrews chapter nine, or excuse me, chapter two, verse nine, in the New International ver Version, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Because Jesus experienced the sting of death and took that victory of death away from us. We don't have to experience it by his grace. Now, this again is contingent, is dependent upon those that die as saved individuals in Christ. Right here, I want to put an annotation. It is not contingent on whether you're a boy or a girl, man or woman, good sinner or a bad sinner, good person or a bad person. It is contingent upon whosoever will, meaning whoever will accept, accept this free gift of God, it is available to them. And Jesus takes the sting of death away from them. Let's see what we learned today. Everyone will have eternal life. Where and how we live our eternal life is dependent on our earthly decisions or the choices we make while living in our bodies. If we accept Jesus' free gift of salvation and remain faithful in our commitment to him while we live here on earth, then we will live with Jesus forever or for eternity. Same thing. In our lesson, we see Martha express her faith to the Lord, a faith that went beyond the current status of her circumstances. She said, even now, we have experienced things like Martha that in our eyes or through human reasoning looked long dead. But like Martha professed to Jesus, God is able to change those things, although the now doesn't look like it can change. Because Jesus experienced the sting of death and took death's victory from us, we don't have to experience it by his grace. This is contingent upon those that die as saved individuals in Christ. Whoever will accept this free gift of God, it is available to them. So for your homework, read ahead for next week's lesson and enjoy celebrating your mom, those that love you like a mom this Mother's Day weekend. So you get a break to enjoy the holiday and to use those efforts to celebrate and honor the mom and mom-like figures in your life. Please join me next week when we will be talking about the true vine. The lesson text will be John chapter 15 verses 1 through 17. And the golden text will be John chapter 15 verse 5. And I encourage you if you have not already, please join my homework heroes. King David said in the contemporary English version of Psalms chapter 119 verse 11, I treasure your word above all else. It keeps me from sinning against you. It makes a difference for you to know the word for yourself. 
And with that, I wish all of you lovely ladies a happy Mother's Day. Or, in your case, it may be a happy Auntie's Day. But enjoy celebrating your mom. Enjoy celebrating the memory of your mom. Happy Mother's Day. And with that said, I would like to wish a few people Happy Mother's Day. Our First Lady, Happy Mother's Day. Our Assistant Pastor, Happy Mother's Day. And this lady you see highlighted in the purple box, my mom, happy Mother's Day. And I ran out of pictures. I don't have a picture of my grandma, but happy Mother's Day to my grandma Louise as well. So I'm sure you have special ladies in your life as well. Wish them a happy Mother's Day, including your sisters. My sisters, my brothers, they made me a very proud aunt. And to them, I also say happy Mother's Day. Thank you for having joined me for Sunday School Online and also for your patience and your prayers. Join me again next time when we will gather around this word, the perfect law of liberty. And I leave you with my borrowed saying from VeggieTales, God made you special and he loves you very much. Have a great day. Make it a great day. Remember that special lady in your life. Bye.